Hey everyone, Nick Russo here. I'm asking for a few minutes of your time today so that I can help you succeed in learning the new Cisco DevNet technologies, whether you're interested in the certifications or not. With some help from other experts, I've created two high-quality skill assessments that I think you'll really enjoy. Having taken and passed three DevNet exams, I know these assessments will help prepare you. I want to be fully transparent up front. These are skill assessments meant to measure your technical proficiency. They are not official Cisco certification practice exams. Just keep that in mind as you make your way through the assessments and their corresponding content. The first assessment generally focuses on the DevNet Associate or DevAsk blueprint topics with a few goodies sprinkled in. My first course in this series focuses on core software skills like software design lifecycle techniques, version control systems like Git and GitHub, and HTTP fundamentals. We build a simple Flask app, which we continually improve through the learning path. The next course covers two main topics, Cisco product APIs and core DevOps tools like Docker and continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines. Our main goal is to elevate Cisco products and add some unit and system tests to our Flask app. The final course covers network fundamentals, which I imagine most network people already know. It also covers infrastructure automation using NetConf and RESTConf with some non-trivial examples using the DevNet sandboxes. The next assessment combines many DevNet professional core or dev core flavored topics with advanced network automation. This first course builds on your existing software knowledge. It covers things like different database types and when you'd use different databases, different architectural styles like monolithic versus microservices, stuff like that. Additionally, I use SQL Alchemy to add my SQL support to the Flask app from the previous learning path, then deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster using continuous deployment. Pretty hardcore stuff. The second course focuses on Cisco products. Probably the two hardest tasks in this course are building a custom Flask receiver using Let's Encrypt SSL certificates to receive Meraki location data, and also setting up an interactive chatbot that ties into our microservices app we wrote in the previous course. The final DevCore flavored course covers intermediate level network automation with a heavy focus on RESTConf and Yang. This includes using the popular Python requests library as well as Ansible. I also introduce Puppet for the NX API and NetConf based dial in streaming telemetry using the ELK stack. To help round out your software skills, I've included my most popular course to date, which is Ansible for Networks. This covers a service provider's journey to automate their network using progressively more complex and powerful techniques. For those not crazy about Ansible, imagine the previous course except using Python tools like Paramico, NetMico, Napalm, NC Client, and Nornir. It covers the same scenario to help you compare the different solutions. Now for the big question, why should you take these assessments? First, they are completely free. You sign up using your email and there is no paywall or credit card information required. The courses I detailed earlier are optional and will teach you the skills that are tested in the assessments, but you aren't required to watch them. Each time you take the assessment, you'll get about 20 questions from a pool containing a few hundred questions. This helps you measure actual improvement over time by reducing the likelihood of getting duplicate questions across multiple attempts. Each question has a time limit which is based on the question's length and difficulty. Some questions get less than a minute and some get close to 4 minutes. Let's walk through the details of how the assessments work. First, here's you. Clearly you are happy because you are getting some excellent free resources to sharpen your skills. You take your first assessment, and once the exams are out of beta, you'll get a numeric score between 1 and 300. There are three categories of scores, novice, proficient, and expert. Then, you'll have some kind of emotional response. Either you'll be happy with your score, or you won't. If you are satisfied with your first result, you are encouraged to begin watching the courses. Some of you may opt to quit at this stage, and that's totally okay. I'm not pressuring anyone, but if you decide you want to improve your score or learn some new things, you can dive into the learning paths I described earlier. If you aren't satisfied, you get a free do-over within 48 hours. This is basically a free second test, 
and compared to the first test, the highest score is retained on record. After the second test, it's time to start your training. If you want to take the assessment again, you must do one of two things. You can complete 60% of the entire learning path by watching the videos. That means roughly two out of three courses for the DevNet Associate, as an example. Then, you can retake the test, and hopefully you'll have a much higher score. Alternatively, you can wait 30 days. This resets the clock and you're able to take the assessment again. However, the benefit of getting through 60% of the learning path is that you get unlimited retakes without needing to wait. I'm sure you're sick of hearing me talk about these assessments, so let's see what they're all about. So I just created a new account using my personal email at Pluralsight, which doesn't have any paid entitlements or anything like that. Here's a screenshot of what the sign-up screen might look like before you log in. You don't even need to provide a phone number, just your email and a few other details, and you can create a free account, which gives you access to these assessments. Because these assessments are so new, they're still in beta, and we need 50 people to go through and take them so the exams can be calibrated. That means you won't get a score until the calibration is complete, but you can always come back later and take them again if you want to get an actual score. I'm going to click on start now, we'll go through a few questions together, I'll show you how it works, then I'll pause the video, finish the test, and show you what it looks like at the end. So after you click the start button, it just gives you a disclaimer that the test is still in beta, and if you scroll down, we should be able to start. We just have to click this button and we're ready to go. Okay, this first question, it looks like it gave me about two minutes to answer, and it looks like a PyTest question. So you can read the question. You know, we're not going to go through it too much together here. Uh, looks like there's a failure at the end where it is doing some tests that failed. I'm just going to take a quick look at the answers. I don't really care if I get this right or not. Um, but it looks like there might have been a math problem there. So let's see. I'm just going to guess the second one that looks like it might be right. Okay, it was. Okay, so we got one right. That's cool. Now this next question, I'm going to try to get this wrong on purpose just to show you what happens when you get a question wrong. So it looks like we're dealing with some bash here, uh, trying to do some web server stuff. Um, let's find something that just doesn't make sense. Okay, so this last one talks about doing something interactively. I didn't see any interactive stuff up there, so that should be wrong, and it is. And if we scroll up a little bit, you can see that uh, middle entry there is outlined in green, so it tells you the correct answer, so you kind of learn as you go. And you can also see that this question had, I don't know, maybe 200 seconds, so more than three minutes to answer, so plenty of time to read the question and read all the answers, and that timer is going to differ based on the length of the question. So I'm going to pause the video now, I'm going to go through the rest of the assessment, I'm going to get a few wrong on purpose, and then we'll see what it looks like at the end. Once you finish the assessment, you'll get this pop-up that just explains how the scores work, so let's just click let's go to move past it. Now, because this is beta, we don't actually get a numeric value, and looking at my scores, it looks like I missed five questions. Again, I was just missing a couple on purpose as we go, and at this point, you're done. Now, my recommendation would be to check the box that says email me when this assessment goes live, so we can check that box, and then you'll know when the assessment is finalized, so you can retake it and get an actual score. Let's jump back to the slides real quick, and then we'll wrap up. In case you didn't see them already, the links to these assessments are in the video description. We only looked at the associate level one in the demo, but there's also a professional level one you can explore if you want to test your skills. There's a good chance that I'll be adding more assessments in the future, so keep your eyes out if you enjoyed these two. Good luck in your studies, and thanks again for your time.